Okay, everybody, time for our Celebration 2020 ceremony. Uh, my name is Gordon Jabal. I am the Associate Dean and a lecturer here at the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. I must say it's very strange talking to nobody. I'm used to a sea of faces uh, and I miss you all. Uh, I wish you were here with me. Before we start, I would first wanna thank the faculty and staff that helped put this event together for you. Um, they've worked tirelessly, uh, really hard on their computers. Who knew that they liked to Zoom so much? But it's really been a great testimony to the, all of our staff and faculty and their dedication to our school. Uh, this committee really did a phenomenal job. So that's off to them. Let me start by congratulating the members of the class of 2020. About 11.30 this morning, uh, the president of the university, Peter Salve, granted you all your degrees with their rights and responsibilities. So actually you are now graduates of the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. Usually there'd be lots of cheering. So everybody cheer, yell, ring your noise makers, and celebrate the fact that you're now graduates of the school. It's a bittersweet time always. I know that's a cliche, but it's true. Uh, we've had so much time with you, so much fun with you, so many great activities, um, but now you're on your way, you're off. And the one thing I will tell you, it's repeated over and over again, one thing you take with you are all your good friends. You'll have them for the rest of your life. So stay in touch with them and please come back and visit us. Let me ask you all to consider what and who have come before us. Over millions of years, microorganisms, plants, and animals have interacted with atmospheres, rocks, water, and climate to evolve into the nature that we have around us. About 200,000 years ago, our species appeared, maturing in Africa and eventually colonizing the whole globe. We can imagine all of these interactions. Today, we pay special attention to the place where we each are, to the people, their culture and the ecosystems that came before us and to the cultures and ecosystems we will help to create. We reflect on those stressed and sick at this time. We thank our healthcare practitioners, our food providers and all of us who are helping families, friends, neighbors and strangers. Here's to a new, a new normal in the future of peace, justice and a healthy biosphere. Okay, now to the ceremony. Imagine marching from Bowers Auditorium down to the Croom Courtyard. As you approach the big tent, all your family members will stand up and cheer as you enter in, and you'll be treated to the tune of our great acapella group, The Logarithms. Please welcome The Logarithms. Bum, 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 bum. We shared the years. We shared each day. In love together, we found a way. But soon the world had a team. We get jobs, no more GHGs. We're just having fun, so we move to DC. So what? We get jobs. That's how it's supposed to be. Living young and wild and free. Wherever I'm with you. 
jobs. No more we can't fall. We're just having fun. Always whenever I'm with you. So when we get jobs, that's a blessing. We can go and through the changes whenever I'm with you. So when we get jobs, I'm too few for some time. Home is whenever I'm with you. Ah, uh, home. Yes, I am home. Home is whenever I'm with you. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Bum. Bum bum bum, bum 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 bum, bum 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 bum. Sometimes in our lives we all have pain, we all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Leave on me. When you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on, for it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. You just call on your brother when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you understand. We all need somebody to lean on. Lean on me when you're not strong. And I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Call me, oh, call me, oh, call me, my friend, call me, call me. Thank you, Logarithms. Beautiful, as always. It's my pleasure now to welcome Dean Indy Burke, our 16th Dean, the Carl W. Knobloch Dean of the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. Welcome to the 2020 celebration for graduates of the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies and a special congratulations to the class of 2020, all 143 of you. Today is not what we imagined it would be a few months ago. I very much miss our in-person gatherings and conversations, and I look forward to meeting your families and friends when we have the chance for an in-person graduation. But let's take some time now to celebrate the culmination of your countless hours of hard work and commitment we celebrate the accomplishments of eight students who completed their doctoral studies and received the Doctor of Philosophy from Yale University. These students explored a range of critical research areas, including stand dynamics of oak in the Sierra Norte, breeding systems of flowering plants, forest dynamics and biomass accumulation, integrated biorefineries, sustainable water treatment, economic aspects of renewable energy and air pollution, urban extreme temperatures, and forest responses to stress and water limitation. These scholars show the incredible breadth of disciplines and approaches that we use to study the environment. We celebrate 11 graduates receiving the degree of Master of Forestry, two receiving the degree of Master of Forest Science, 113 receiving the degree of Master of Environmental Management, and 17 receiving the degree of Master of Environmental Science. 
You master's students are the last who will receive diplomas from our school under the name of the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. You become legacies in so many ways as you graduate today. Our students are the result of our partnerships. 16 graduates receive joint master's degrees with the Yale School of Management, four with the Yale School of Architecture, one with the Divinity School, one is receiving a joint master's with their Juris Doctorate from the Yale Law School, two with their JD from the Elizabeth Howe Law School at Pace University, and one from the Vermont Law School. We also celebrate today four students receiving joint masters of environmental management with a master's of environmental engineering from Tsinghua University in China. All of you receiving your degree today have accomplished a great deal. You've given a tremendous amount academically and to our community. You've worked hard, played hard, learned from our faculty and challenged us to learn as well and learn from each other. You've earned our respect and you deserve our congratulations. Be proud of your accomplishment. And I hope that each of you in your own way can share your gratitude with all who've supported you. Partners, family, friends, faculty, staff, and the donors who provided your scholarship, internship, and travel funding. None of us gets through graduate school without advice, challenge, encouragement, and shoulders to lean on. Graduates, it's an unusual time to receive your degree. It's a time of great tragedy around the world and a time of great uncertainty. But I hope you can take joy in your accomplishments today and reflect not only on the last nine weeks, but also on the 90% or more of your time here at Yale, all of that which happened before March. And remember, society will come through the coronavirus pandemic in time. It's but one of the challenges facing humans today. Our continuing challenge will be providing humans with the water, food, energy, fiber, and other resources we require without permanently damaging the planet that provides those resources. This is the challenge that persists and what guides and inspires our work. So let me start by talking about the journey over the past several years. You came to us with many strengths and you officially finished today as leaders who are more knowledgeable, better problem solvers, more networked, and with a giant toolkit to help you grow and change to be ever more impactful. I've been so impressed and inspired by your work here and the leadership you've displayed while here. I have not gotten to know enough of you well, but those I have gotten to know well have some surmounted some real challenges. I've been so fortunate to be with you in mods as some of you spent your very first weeks ever living in the outdoors. Many of you immersed yourself in our school at the same time as immersing yourself in a new country and becoming comfortable with our language. Others I joined in uncomfortable, important work in workshops and forums to improve our understanding of the deep and crucial issues of racism and inequity facing society and indeed our school. Still others work together to run international conferences, develop new curricula, and even piloted a long planned major film festival to a virtual platform. I've watched you surmount these challenges with grace and diplomacy and I am impressed. And we've had so much fun together, the TGIFs, the talent show, hikes together at Yale Myers, the rock to rock bike ride, the end of the year party, research day, an upgoer, and much more. In this last two months, we've been together while distant, facing new kinds of challenges and learning together as individuals and as a collective. How can I speak to you today in a way to both celebrate your many successes and still acknowledge the new challenges we'll all face? How do we celebrate your incredible capabilities while still confronting the crises of both the current pandemic and the threats to the environment, climate change, and threats to justice? How can we celebrate your leadership while acknowledging the crisis of leadership that faces our country and others? 
how can we be collectively inspired to deploy our capabilities to address these existential challenges? I can't help but reflect on our school's mission, knowledge and leadership for a sustainable future. The current global catastrophe of the pandemic crystallizes the challenges facing humanity today and our need for both knowledge and for leadership. Certainly in my memory, there has never been such a need for both. And I believe that each of you and all of us have the capability and the responsibility to deploy our skills towards solutions. Let me take each in turn, knowledge and leadership, and highlight their critical importance at this time. I'd like to speak to two of the aspects of your knowledge that I think are crucial and that are underappreciated in much, if not most, of society. I want to talk about interconnectedness and about your understanding of scholarship that is the process of generating knowledge. You have a deep appreciation now for how connected we are across the planet. You've learned about this in your work here as interdisciplinary complexity and as systems thinking. You've studied the undeniable interconnectedness across the globe in our cultures, in our consumption, in our economic system, in the status of our biological diversity and migratory species, air quality, climate change, and oceans. You've studied interdisciplinary constructs and even produced models of these phenomena to demonstrate that nothing we do is in isolation, either as individuals or as communities or nations. We cannot contain an emitted molecule of a greenhouse gas to a particular country or a virus in a single country, or an ocean pollutant in one estuary, an electron in an energy grid, one piece of misinformation on social media, or constrain the impact of one critical part of a global supply chain. Disruptions magnify across the planet, and we must expect it and plan for it. There's a great need for personal responsibility community responsibility, and national responsibility. It is ever more evident that the behavior of each has grave consequences. All of you have studied aspects of this. We know that there are also huge opportunities to be found in interconnectedness. We can share our knowledge and approaches through our networks, for instance. We can share hope, optimism, creative solutions, funding, and much more, all of which is in Texas. Each of you has engaged in this. Second, you understand the process of generating knowledge, or what we call scholarship. In every realm, including the pandemic and the environment, there's an undeniable and urgent need for science, and especially for the kinds of science that lead to solutions. Much of society today now demands knowledge, prediction, and even certainty from experts. And many find deep frustration and express disbelief in what they feel they receive from experts instead. As graduates, you now have a deep understanding of some of the key elements of producing knowledge. For instance, failure of hypotheses is critical to gaining knowledge. Testing hypotheses requires experiments, and it's not always possible to experiment, for instance, on human beings or on the globe at large. In a more colloquial way of saying this, we truly learn from our mistakes, and in fact, that is the only way to advance knowledge. You also understand that all predictions of the future contain uncertainties. The uncertainty magnifies when we have major elements of human behavior interacting with the more predictable physical and biological phenomena. Uncertainty, though, is interpreted by science skeptics as a lack of knowledge. Witness skeptics' dis dismissal of epidemiological models now, their dismissal of decades' worth of climate change models, of sea level forecasts, of economic forecasts, of policy impacts on the environment. 
there's embedded uncertainty about how many people will die, how much temperature will change in the next decade, how much sea level rise and where. And much of the uncertainty arises because of the difficulty in predicting human behavior. But society today is demanding certainty from experts. And the more of an expert you are, the more you understand uncertainty and that humility and not hubris are the way to advance knowledge and to generate solutions. Let me say that again. Understanding uncertainty and advancing society requires humility, not hubris. How is it that there is so much certainty in society today and dismissal of science, ignorance of facts, and interpretation that uncertainty means a complete lack of knowledge? This is the part where your leadership comes in. And I've watched you as leaders in our school in so many ways, and we need your strong and trustworthy selves to lead us into the future to address the present and future challenges of climate change, environmental injustices, economic uncertainties and opportunities. For all of us who've been working to develop our skills, there's never before been a more diverse array of examples of failed and successful leadership as now. There may not be a recipe for leadership, but we have certainly recognized it when we have seen it over the past few months, as we seek credibility, accountability, humanity, and human humility and honesty about the unpopular truth and uncertainties. We seek information that we can understand and that is relevant to decisions being taken. We seek leaders who, when possible, give us guidelines and the opportunity to contribute to solutions. And finally, we need leaders who come from a place not only of humility, but from a place of deep generosity. I have seen so many of you leading with your peers to support our community during this period, and I've been inspired by your capabilities. Still, it's a lifelong endeavor to continue developing our knowledge and our leadership skills. In the recent book, Becoming, by Michelle Obama, she writes, even at 54, I am still in progress, and I hope that I always will be. For me, becoming isn't about arriving somewhere or achieving a certain aim. I see it instead as forward motion, a means of evolving and a way to reach continuously toward a better self because it's all a process, steps along a path. Becoming requires equal parts, patience and rigor. Becoming is never giving up the idea that there's more growing to be done. As you cultivate your own skills and effectiveness, your knowledge and leadership for a sustainable future, know that you have all the materials you need. Remember that carrying your new credential, a graduate of Yale, a graduate of the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, gives you a huge advantage in your capabilities and your networks, but it has elements of having two sides. There are some who will be put off by your credential. So harness not only your credential, but also your humility and generosity. You become today part of a network of leaders with these attributes, a connected network. The alumni of the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, over 5,000 strong across the globe. While I could go on to laud the accomplishments of these alumni whom you joined today, let me just point to one key very recent activity of our network. Our alumni and development office is working to raise $75,000 from our alumni and supporters for you, the graduates of 2020 who have exceptional need at this time. A better example of leadership and being connected and generous, I cannot imagine. So graduates, be confident. Be proud of your achievement as we all admire your accomplishment. Still, temper your confidence with humility and generosity. We put our faith in you to leave a, lead us into a future where expertise is critical and trusted. You will be leaders. 
the sheer enormity of the capital you all represent in intellect, knowledge, creativity, passion, energy, resourcefulness, and support for one another is immeasurable. You will be leading for decades, far longer than a pandemic or a political term, through your scholarship, through your strategic development and supportive policies, your activism, and through creating new tools of many kinds to address sustainability challenges and new crises. Imagine the places you are going. Our doctoral students are heading out for exciting steps, including postdocs at Princeton, the Center for Atmospheric Research, University of Oregon, and right here at Yale, or exciting new roles such as serving as the lead technical advisor for Africa on forest and climate change at UNEP. Two of you are completing your master's degrees and starting doctoral programs at great institutions. Others of you already have received positions with a wide array, array of employers and titles that include but are not limited to renewable strategic expert at Microsoft, climate change analyst at Rheem, business development manager for Ranger Power, conservation analyst at the Open Space Institute, coastal management fellow at NOAA, investment banking associate at Nomura Green Tech, Presidential Management Fellow with USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service, Associate at Goldman Sachs in the natural resource sector, and many others. And you're going off to areas across the globe, from New England to California, Wisconsin to Seattle, and Rwanda to China. Some of you are still searching for the ideal job. We are committed to helping you find that, and I have confidence that you will. In sum, we're collectively launching one of the world's most powerful forces of environmental leadership into career paths across the planet. Class of 2020, you amaze me. I'm inspired by your successes, your true expertise, your scholarship, and your leadership. I know that the world is in better hands with you launched out into it. You are experts and you are formidable. Thank you for all that you've given to each other and all that you've given to our community. Thank you for giving us here at the school optimism about the world. Thank you for challenging me to learn and grow in my first years here. Stay close to each other. Keep those friendships alive. Stay close to the school. Come back often. Make a difference in the world and share your time, talent, and treasure with those who follow in your footsteps. I look forward to seeing you again in person when it's possible for our graduation ceremony. I hope you and your family stay safe until then. We're proud of you now, but I know that we'll be even more proud of what you accomplish in the future. And we're counting on you. Congratulations. Thank you, Indy. I'm now happy to introduce Austin Sheets, winner of the Strawn Donnelly Award, given to honor the memory of Dr. Strawn Donnelly, Yale College class of 1964, and founder of the Center for Humans and Nature. Austin's conducted research and outreach in Laikipia County in Kenya, working with local organizations, local ranchers, and local indigenous pastoralist communities to understand the feedbacks between mechanisms to share land reduce conflict and conserve ecosystems. Austin is not just researching and leaving. He has continued to stay engaged with the Kenyan community he was working with. He is using the results from his research to inform ranchers, pastoralists on refining the contracting systems to find social and ecological win-wins. Congratulations, Austin. Hello to the FES community and class of 2020. My name is Austin Sheets and I'm a graduating MESC focused on economics and sustainable development. I'm the recipient of the 2020 Strawn Donnelly Award, which is given to a graduating master's student who blends humanities with ecology to promote sustainability and social justice. 
So I received this award in recognition of my thesis research, which studies the market for cattle grazing permits in Kenya. The market was created to resolve conflicts between white ranchers and indigenous cattle herding pastoralists. I wanted to know how the market operates and predict whether permits may also help to promote conservation of the pastoralist degraded lands. My results show that the permits may reduce conflict between ranchers and pastoralists, but they do not help promote conservation because they fail to protect pastoral lands from overgrazing. Now, my research methods involve explicitly modeling the feedbacks between economic and ecological processes. And I think that this approach of considering humans and the environment together is incredibly important. The time to view society as separate from the environment has long passed. Our influence on the natural world extends absolutely everywhere, but so does our dependence on it. People across the planet, from the indigenous Maasai in my thesis to each and every one of us, depend on the natural world. Everyone on the planet maintains an aesthetic, spiritual connection to nature that is just as important as the physical resources it gives us. I think we should all dedicate effort to understanding and fostering this connection. We should keep nature's intrinsic value at the forefront of our minds. As we embark on our lives post FES, I think we should all remember the things that brought each of us here in the first place and bind us together as a community, such as respect for the natural world and respect for each other, commitment to making the world a better place, a deep love and appreciation for the planet and the people in it. We may all go on to do very different things, but I hope we all remain committed to the values that brought us here. So I am extremely honored and humbled to receive the Strong Donnelly Award, but I'm even more humbled to be graduating amidst such a distinguished and passionate class as ours. So keep fighting the good fight. Thank you all very much and good luck. The Kroon Cup Award recognizes a member of our community who implemented tangible, creative, and experimental projects that engage the FES community. The recipient is selected by their peers for fostering community and inspiring others to steward local resources in ways that hold promise for solving large problems. The Kroon Cup this year goes to Kagi Oreck. As a PhD student, Kagi has connected the masters and PhD communities. Kagi has played a fundamental role in strengthening the doctoral community, one that is often underrepresented at school-wide events, while simultaneously enriching the FES community at large. Her participation in our community takes many forms, from leading the Wednesday biomes and community conversation series, to volunteering on SAC, and helping to form the new doctoral student government body. Kagi goes out of her way to listen to all opinions, feedback, and ideas, that others have, thereby enabling others to participate and contribute in equitable, flexible, and safe ways. Kegi is a true leading example of how to selflessly volunteer for the greater good. Congratulations, Kegi. Dear class of 2020, such a huge congratulations to all of you on this momentous occasion. It is noteworthy and even in these uncertain times, I hope that you can all be proud and congratulate yourselves on completing your graduate degree. When I was asked to submit a short video to accept the Kroon Cup, a number of thoughts came to my head. First, I'm honored that I was nominated at all, much less one. There are so many individuals and groups out at FES that are worthy of this award. If I could, I would definitely pull an FES version of the Mean Girls moment and chop up the Croon Cup with my chainsaw and toss pieces to everyone, particularly to those who I've had the privilege of working with, members of SAC, Biomes, the PhD community, and especially to community conversations. These have always been team efforts. Second, I feel fortunate that this has inadvertently given me a platform to say thank you for my last two years here. For many of you graduating today, we started at the same time, first meeting at MODS and orientation. Others of you have been friends and colleagues through shared lab spaces and other FES events, so I'm glad I'm able to wish you virtual luck and goodbyes. The last point I wanted to make was that while I can't tell you what the future is gonna hold, I do know that we are all more than adequately prepared to take on the challenges that lie ahead. 
not because of what FES has taught us, but maybe that will help a little bit, but because I think that an important aspect of working in our field is that we need to be flexible and adaptable, and we definitely have those skills. Groups such as SAC and community conversations exist because people see both the need for improvement, but also that there's clearly hope and inherent good in what already exists. I think more than ever, we do not have the time to not treat each other with respect, especially as we move off into positions of power and privilege that a graduate degree here at Yale gives us. A lot of what I've been doing for the last two years has really just been to first accept that I was not the smartest in the room and then to listen openly to others and try and continually check my biases and my privilege. And that is what I love the most is that that is something we can all do. It does not require a certain level of intelligence or a graduate degree from a prestigious university. And also why I think it might be a little bit silly that I'm getting an award for this. We can all do this. We can all try and make space for one another and allow everyone to be heard. We can hold respectful conversations with those who we disagree with. And this is why I am so excited to see what all of you are gonna be doing in the future ahead. In particular, how you're going to support your community and causes that are important to you and how you're gonna make thoughtful decisions in the times that we face ahead. And with that, to the last graduating class of the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, I cheers to you all and wish you the best of luck in your next adventures. Thank you, Kagi. I'm now pleased to introduce the three who have won the Teaching Fellowship Awards for their outstanding contributions to your education in the past year. Ethan Atticott, Reed Lewis, and Robert Little. After their remarks, you'll see yourselves as you were two years ago when you arrived at the school and were asked to provide a fun fact about yourself as a way of introducing yourselves to each other with a few photos of your time at MODS. I apologize in advance. Um, I read through the nominations, uh, the testimonials that were written for each and I would go on and on, but I don't want to delay too long, but I've tried to shorten these down, but they are extensive because there's so much respect in the community for these three people. Ethan's nominators wrote, Ethan has mastered the magic of translating complicated math problems into simple, easy to understand ones. He has a unique teaching method, not only clarifying the questions asked, but also connecting the ideas to other topics. This really helps the students to further understand the questions in a more systematic way. Having him as a teaching fellow is more like having a co-instructor who brings real teaching insights to the course. In the applied math course, he provides new insights and activities that help to communicate difficult concepts. The material he develops is innovative, leveraging online tools and active learning. He makes instructional videos and is always available for extra help. From Reed's nominating letters, our sampling class is a complicated statistical sampling course with challenging coding required. Reed dedicate, dedicated himself tirelessly to the course. He gave us his cell phone number to call with questions and hosted weekly office hours where he made us lattes with little leaf designs in the foam and spent as much time as he needed to help us understand the material. In one instance, I was struggling to complete a homework assignment doing complicating coding in R and he called me on his weekend to talk me through it. His knowledge of the source material is rich and built on significant prior work experience in tech statistics. He's a fantastic teaching fellow and a great friend as well. Robert's nominators wrote, Robert led a discussion section for the perspectives course. Robert challenged us in our discussions and encouraged us to engage in the case study with compassion and critical thinking. Our discussion section was often filled with passionate debates. He arrived to Kroon early and made us tea and coffee, which were thoughtful and extremely helpful. He tactfully led conversations, took the time to know all the students in the section on personal and academic levels, provided guidance in completing assignments, and created an environment that allowed us all to express our ideas and challenge our preconceptions. He handled situations where there was disagreement between students with calm and wise ease. He understood not only that all students have a right to their own opinions, and perspectives, 
but that every student had different participation styles and ways of sharing. His grading was timely, his feedback was helpful, his insights, humor, and kindness made a midweek 9 a.m. session something to actually look forward to. I always felt I could rely on him to support me for specific class endeavors and greater FES matters. Congratulations, Ethan, Reed, and Robert. Okay, now there's a long period. I'm honored to be recognized with the FES Award for Excellence as a Teaching Fellow for Applied Math for Environmental Studies and Economics of Sustainability. This final semester in particular posed the tandem challenges of online learning on one end and online teaching on the other. Responding to a new and challenging teaching environment is something that I learned alongside this graduating master's class two summers ago when I stepped into the instructor role at the Great Mountain Forest Mod. As excited as I was to welcome you to the school in 2018, now that I've gotten to know many of you better over the course of the last two years, I'm doubly grateful to have this opportunity to celebrate your accomplishments and through teaching to have played a small part in your FES experience. I share this recognition with all those I have learned from, all those I've taught with and assisted, including Eli Fenichel and Matt Kotchin here at FES, Brett Smith and John Hall in the Yale Math Department, and of course, Mike Gage and the inimitable Star Childs at Great Mountain. And finally, you, the folks I've had the pleasure of helping, who gave me the time of day, trusted me to walk through problems, and helped me become a better teacher for the next group of students. Thank you again for this honor. Stay safe, and congratulations to the graduates of the class of 2020. I'm really flattered to have received this awesome award. Working as a TF has been fantastic. Um, wanted to give a big thanks to Devin and Pete and James for just being terrific students to work with. And workshopping with you all really gave me meaning and joy in these uncertain times. Also, a really big thanks to Dr. Gregoire for being just a terrific professor to work under and with. A massive, massive congratulations to you all, class of 2020, I think. Living with you all and dancing with you and learning and working with you has been an absolute joy and pleasure for the last two years. And I'm envious of the communities you're gonna go move into, but looking forward to the ways in which you're gonna impact the world. And very much looking forward to when our paths cross next. Congratulations. Hi there, students, families, and community surrounding the Yale FES class of 2020. Hope you're all healthy and weathering this wild ride in high spirits and are sharing gratitude, thanks, and extra love uh, wherever and however you can right now. Uh, I'm zooming in to accept a teaching award on behalf of this first year seminar class I led last fall. And for that, thanks a whole lot. Um, from the bottom of my heart, Annalise, Aaron, Emmy, Humna, Rachel, Sage, Bijan, Abik, Elliot, Joita, Julia, uh, our early morning sessions held true to really what the mission of this perspectives class was, to showcase and wrestle with diverse opinions in a thoughtful, fiery, passionate, uh, yet respectful environment. Thanks for nominating me, and thank you for such a thoughtful, supportive engagement over this class. Uh, I really appreciate our time together, and I'm thinking about it a lot uh, these days. In addition, because I can't thank them in person, I wanted to thank my parents, Jan, Rory, and Olivia, for helping foster my growth. And thanks to you too for watching right now. My innumerable friends, including Yale faculty, staff, students, uh, who made these last two years feel socially, not distant, but socially close. Um, on that note, I have one just kind of final reflection, if you'll indulge me, um, which is that over the last two years, this community has really showed me this kind of antithetical definition of social distancing that we're all experiencing right now. Uh, from long, sticky nights in the Yale forests during mods, to long, sticky assignments in Kroon Hall, to long, sticky parties and TGIFs in the Forestry Club events, and long, sticky lectures and special events to help me check my privilege and really understand my own personal conceptions, truths, and help me grow as a person. We have a really special, buzzing, uh, hive mind community that does a good job coming together in sticky bivouacs, helping each other foster our class's growth, to push each other, 
to enjoy each other's like-minded company after hours and to uh, support one another, even in tough times like this. Um, though we've had to maintain our physical distance, I'm touched that we've maintained our social closeness. For me, whether teeing in class or joining Reed or Jack to mop the beer-soaked floors of Bowers and Croon, to endless summer dinner parties at 395 Orange, or now finding the laughter and the goofy silver linings and adjusting to this new way of life together. Uh, I hope you can join me in recognizing the contrast between physical distance and social distance, knowing that I'm truly thankful for all the social closeness that we forged and continue to foster as we make the environmental change we want to see in the world. So congratulations to the students, families, and community surrounding the class of 2020. Uh, I wish you all uh, well and look forward to the day that we can come together once again and match our social closeness with some good physical proximity. Much love and take care. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you again. Damn. All the planes we flew, good things we've been through. Then I'll be standing right here talking to you about another path. I know we love to hit the road and laugh, but something told me that it wouldn't last. Had to switch up, look at things different, see the bigger picture. Those were the days, hard work forever pays. Now I see you in a better place. See you in a better place. Ah, uh, how can we not talk about family when family's all that we got? Everything I would do, you were standing there by my side. And now you go be with me for the last ride. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. I see you again. We've come a long way, yeah, a long way. from where we began. You know we started. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. I'll tell you. your way in the vibe is feeling stronger with small turn to a friendship a friendship turn to a bond and that bond will never be broken the love will never get lost and when brotherhood come first then the line will never be crossed established it on our own when that line had to be drawn and that line is what we reach so remember me when i'm gone how can we not talk about family when family's all that we got Everything I went through, you were standing there by my side. And now you gon' be with me for the last one. Let the light guide you away. Yeah. Hold every memory as you go. And every road you take will always lead you home. Oh, it's been a you my friend and i'll tell you all about it when i see you again we've come a long way from where we began oh i'll tell you all about it when i see you again when i see
Very special. I'd like to thank Matt Garrett for putting this and some of the other audio and visual uh, presentations together. Thanks, Matt. Now we advertise a special surprise and here it is. Here's one of those who welcomed you two years ago, Justin Elliker of the class of 2010. He graduated with both a master's degree from our school and a master's degree from the School of Management. And he is now our current mayor of our host city, New Haven. Hey, uh, FES class of 2020. My name's Justin Elliker, FES class of 2010. Yes, this is what you're gonna look like in 10 years. Um, I was gonna do this in my fancy mayor's office, but uh, then decided this is FES. So I ran to uh, my favorite spot in East Rock Park, and here I am on this beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, I got three things to say to you on this uh, very special day of yours. The first is congratulations. Uh, you have worked so hard. Believe me, I know I was there uh, on this journey at FES. Uh, on many things that you were required to do for graduation and on many, many things that you were not required to do. I don't know if you remember, but uh, I spoke to you in your first week here and I gave you one piece of advice and that was to choose one extracurricular activity to focus on. I'm quite sure none of you took my advice, but nevertheless you made it through and you had a, uh, an impact on uh, your community. And you also enjoyed, if your experience was anything like mine, one of the most wonderful communities uh, that exists. Uh, friends that are deeply caring, smart, uh, and thoughtful, but most importantly, people that have chosen uh, to dedicate their lives to making a difference in the world around them. Uh, these are friends that, uh, in my experience at FBS, are friends for life. And I, I, I'm sure many of you feel the same way. So congratulations. Uh, the second thing I wanted to say to you is that you will, in the future, you will not fail. And what I mean by that is that what most people may call a failure, you know, is just practicing. Uh, I know from experience, I didn't run for mayor just once. I ran twice. And uh, the first time, some people say I came in last. I like to say I came in second, uh, but I did not win. Uh, and I stood up and kept running again, and here I am. And I'm sure many of you in many different ways will have similar experiences. Uh, you won't fail. Uh, you could do this. And finally, uh, I wanted to say thank you. Uh, we live in a crazy world right now with so many challenges uh, that we haven't seen as a society in decades, uh, in some cases centuries. Uh, around climate change, around a pandemic, uh, around a lack of strong leadership, uh, around income inequality. There is so much need for people like you. And instead of turning your back on this need, instead of focusing on yourself, you've decided, you've decided to dedicate your life to making a, a difference. Uh, it's pretty unusual to find people like you and I wanna say thank you. We need so many more of you. Uh, and uh, I deeply appreciate the fact that you have chosen uh, to make a difference in your life. So with that, I hope you enjoyed your stay in New Haven. I hope you will come back. I will still be here. Um, look me up. And in the meantime, uh, create many stories, many memories, and uh, we will see you very soon. All my best to you and congratulations again. Well, I don't know if you can see me. Um, it doesn't look like I can turn on my video, but I have a short announcement. Ah, there we go. Okay, sorry, a glitch. Um, our final speaker is Gary Barrett who got his degree from our school in MF in 1996. He's president of our school's Alumni Association. Welcome, Gary.
Greetings and congratulations, FBS class of 2020. I am so honored to be here with you today. My name is Gary Barrett. I am a MF from the class of 1996. I'm also the FBS Alumni Association Board President. And I wanted to say, just take a moment to really think about the wonderful achievement that you've done by completing your time here at Yale. You may not recognize it now, and it's not something that I even recognized when I was in your place many, many moons ago, but this place has shaped you and it has allowed you to become a better practitioner of your passion. Today, you join the FBS Alumni Association as well as the Yale University Alumni Association, which promotes the interests of FBS and the university as a whole. We, as a community of alumni, support each other through our activities that build goodwill and strengthen us as professionals. It enhances communications between us and the school, its alumni, and current students, and encourages awareness, participation, volunteer and involvement, and philanthropic commitment to the school and its communities around the globe. As Alumni Association board members, we are elected by our peers to guide and support efforts and serve as the representatives of the alumni. We do things like developing regional events, educational opportunities, supporting diversity focused initiatives, strengthening international alumni connections and recognizing outstanding alumni and students through awards and scholarships. We also undertake special projects such as the current effort in the collaboration with Dean Burke and the Office of Development on Alumni Services to raise money to provide direct financial support to members of your class impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. Any alumni can be nominated or run for the board, and we hope that you will consider doing this in the future, or at least staying involved through other contributions of your time, energy, and passion. Your time, energy, and passion, that's what brought you here to this moment. For some of you, this may feel like it's a culmination of all you have worked for, but for many of you, I bet it feels like it's a lot more uncertain. One thing that can be certain is that while you are graduating from FBS, you are not leaving our community. So please, 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 I beseech you, uh, sign up to be your class secretary so that you can help your classmates stay in touch. Volunteer to be the class agent so that you can encourage your class to pay it forward. Join Alumni Fire uh, to connect with the fellow alumni students. Show up for FES and Yale events in your area. Uh, read your copy of Canopy, uh, the school magazine, which well, it comes to your doorstep or your inbox. And let us know when you move or change your email addresses so that we can keep in touch with you. And always, 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 if you can, come back for Alumni Weekend. Um, it's an opportunity for you to reconnect with your class, but it's also, as you guys were aware, it's an opportunity for students to connect with alum so that they can network and they can also figure out like, hey, what does the world look like after I get out of school? As the FES Alumni Association Board President, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the Alumni Association. If we'd been able to be together in person, you would have had each just pinned each other with the FES shield penned. And you'd have had the chance to sign a really cool old leather book um, that in the early pages holds a congratulations from T Theodore Roosevelt on the graduating class that was at that time the School of Forestry. Um, if you get a chance when you're back in town, uh, please visit Kristen or Hanna um, in SAGE and they can let you participate in that tradition by signing the book. It's kind of cool. You know, it's one of the, the nice aspects of graduating from a really old uh, professional school at Yale. Congratulations again alumni and welcome to this incredible FES alumni community. I know your door will be open to student and alumni who follow after you, just as theirs are open to you now. I look forward to the day that we can all be together in person and to celebrate. And please know that I am, as well as the rest of the board here to help you on your journey toward your professional careers. So thank you very much and congratulations again and go out and make a difference in the world. Welcome to our alumni association. We really understand that you are going through some troubling times and we are here as alumni, as an alumni community together.
Thank you, Gary. Thank you to our student awardees and the logarithms. And thank you, Dean Burt, for your contributions to Celebration 2020. As the celebration ends, we want you to know students, oops, graduates, that the faculty and staff here at the school will miss you. And we really do look forward to you coming back. Graduates, please remember to thank all those who helped you get to where you are today, your families, your friends, your mentors, even your little brother or your older sister and your mentors. And all the rest of you in the audience, the family members, the supporters of these students, we here at the school, the faculty and, students and staff, we thank you for all the support you've given to these wonderful people in the past and present, and you will continue to give them in the future. And we do look forward to meeting you sometime when you can come to New Haven. Masters and doctoral students, you've just received an email from Alyssa Piera uh, announcing uh, what will follow next. Um, you have Zoom meetings with your mods groups and you have the ability to sign up to get a free courtesy of the Career Development Office class photo. So please look for her email in your Yale box. And now, graduates, class dismissed.